wonderful to be here. I thank God for all the churches that are joining us today. a lot today, and I know my God is able. Do you believe that? Amen. God is able? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, Lord God, we thank you just for another opportunity to come before you today, God. God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, just for your grace and your mercy. Hallelujah. We thank you for our right minds and being able to be in the service on today, God. God, I ask that you just cover us today. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Touch us from the top of our hands. Then the Spirit of God was upon him also, and he went on 
and prophesied until he came to the day of the Rama. And he also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel and the white commander and lay down and naked all day and all that night. Therefore, they say, is Saul also among the prophets?
Keep us the best to close your heart and love a better life. God bless.
privilege to be in the house of the Lord on today, and we welcome you to New Vision Christian Fellowship Church. Amen. It is a blessing to have different churches that are here today, and you pastors who took out the time to come. It's especially you. Amen. People that uh, have readings from our different pastors, let me start with the district of the whole world. Something Bishop Michael Newman from
in the house of the Lord one more time. And I'm just thankful that we have friends all over Mesa and Phoenix and Andrew and everywhere. It's just good to be able to go away from home and still be knowing that the power of the Holy Ghost has touched our bodies and healed our bodies. The power of the Holy Ghost has taken us out of depression and recession and every other session that you can. It's just solved our problems. We love the Lord. We know that He is a way maker. And we know that when we've been down to the ground, that He has picked us up.
so grateful and thank God for the vision of this house. This is what we need. First lady. Thank God for this woman. And the passion of this first lady. Thank God for Pastor Kirby and the first man. And we thank God for that powerful speaker, Dr. Russell. Thank God for my wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> today is Pentecost Sunday, and I shared with some of the saints today. I said one of the most important things that we need to think about today is not houses and cars, uh -huh. but meeting Jesus in the air. That is the most important thing now, is being ready when he comes. He said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Is that right? And don't you know, when you follow Joel, it is repentance, restoration, and then the Holy Ghost. He restored us in right relationship from the blood. I wouldn't say that. It was the blood that restored us back in relationship with God. Now He given us a spirit so we can walk on right before God. So we can meet God when we see God. And at this time, I would like to introduce to you this magnificent group of young people behind me. The love of God in their heart.
permission, amen. Is it okay if our praise team brings a selection? Amen. Okay. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be here, but I'm going to be here. Amen. I'm
the invitation to come and worship, amen, worship with you, amen, amen, to, amen, the angel of this house, amen, none other than the Bishop McCree and Jump on 
one week, and so uh, that's why some of us still wear masks inside the sanctuary to our various destinations and medical facilities because we don't want to catch anything from anybody else. But while we think about it a lot of times in the, the medical and health ramifications of what can be a man, uh, I need for somebody to understand, amen, that, that your attitude can also be contagious today. An individual can walk into a room and, and their spirit can uplift, amen, and brighten and light the room. On a, on a contrast, amen, somebody can walk inside the room, amen, with a down disposition and a negative, nasty attitude and can bring everything down. Now, this might just be me, but, but doesn't it always appear as though Amen. The bad, foul, uncooperative, negative attitude oh, always yeah. seems to dominate and, and, and change the atmosphere of everybody else. Oh, yeah. it, it, it's, it's hardly ever sometimes, it may, just make it deep, but it's always somebody man, that comes in amen, and shifts the atmosphere by their attitude. Right. I'm not just talking about outside the church either. <laughs> As I was growing up, I used to hear my grandmama say, one bad apple can spoil the whole bunch. Uh -huh. Whether you want to believe it or not, you are contagious this afternoon. Whether you want to accept it or not, you are contagious this afternoon because you and I can directly affect someone else's life this day. Amen. We can affect them by our talk. We can affect them by our walk. We can affect them by our behavior. We can affect them by our spirits. That's why when you come into the house of the Lord, you need to look around, amen, to see who you're going to be sitting next to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you don't need to sit next to certain people when you come inside the church. I, I, I come inside the church, I, I came to give God some praise. I came to Never conform 
but it should always transform everything and anything that's around us. I'm going to say that again. The Holy Ghost that resides in you, it should never conform, but it should transform any and everything that is around you. Let me give you an example. First lady and I, some years ago, went back to Chicago, amen, for our aunt's funeral. And after we went to the funeral, you know, there's a repast, amen, that people go to and eat and all these different type of things. And so they were, uh, they were, they were saying that they were going over to a particular cousin's house, amen, uh, uh, for the repast. And, and, and so me and first lady came up, okay, well, what's the address, amen? Uh, and, and so we go there. They said, no. Now, when they arrived, 
they, they, they saw Samuel leading worship service. They, they, they saw Samuel, amen, and, and the prophets, amen, praising and prophesying and lifting up the name of their Lord, amen, in worship service. And when the soldiers approached, amen, uh, the Bible doesn't tell us that they said anything, but they must have got close enough, or at least in the vicinity, as they saw Samuel the prophets prophesying. The scripture says that that spirit jumped up on the soldiers. And they began to, amen, prophesy themselves. So sent a second group to go get David. And it happened a second time. And they saw the third group, amen. And it happened a third time, each and every time. On each and every occasion, the soldiers, amen, uh, uh, they came to this worship service. And something got on one of them. Amen, 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 amen. Bless 
and you need to go to work some things out in your life. When the Spirit of God is here, amen, it consumes everything in this path. The only reason why it doesn't consume you sometimes is because we resist what God wants to do for us. We resist the Spirit of God. Don't you understand that the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, is not going to try to force itself on you? That's right. You don't want to clap your hands, the Spirit ain't going to make you clap your hands. You don't want to give me no praise, I'm not going to open your mouth so you can give me. The Spirit of God is very gentle, very, if, if you want to praise me, go ahead and praise me. And you can think about the things that I've done, and think about the things that I've done. Yes. 
blessed the day of your life. I don't know why you wouldn't. But I want the anointing of God to be so prevalent on me. That when I walk by somebody, I hear what I'm saying. When I walk by somebody, like, 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 like Peter with his shower. Amen. Hit the folks in there that were laying, uh, laying in there and sick of it. I want my anointing to be so perfect, so contagious, that when I walk into the sun, when I walk into my head in there, and I turn and I say, my husband and I say, but when I walk into the kitchen, when I walk into my home, amen, the anointing is just so strong, they got to change their tears. Oh, 
inside of each and every one of you that can take us spirit. That contagious anointing. You know, there's no way how people say, you know, I wish, I wish I could be as anointed as South Commission Moon. I wish I could be as anointed as Bishop McCree. I wish I could be as anointed as Pastor Kirby and speak the way he's speaking. He must profess and proclaim the name of God. I, I wish I could have that anointing. Can I tell somebody something? These men and women, they only don't say no different than the Holy Ghost. God can separate when they can take the Holy Ghost to go into the preacher, to go into the praise singer, to go into the deacon. That's not what God did. It's not the Holy Ghost. You have that anointing if you have that Holy Ghost. But you have to cultivate it and nurture it and care for it and walk with it and allow it to lead and guide you. Yes. Just because you want to sit down, sometimes you got to tell your flesh we stand and nothing's wrong. Just because you don't want to talk about your hands, you got to say, this, I'm talking about my hands this morning. Yes. That's why you need inside of the church. You got to come with the right attitude because your attitude is contagious even in the house of God. Pretty soon you just get up the same. I'm going to say that today. You just, you just a sounding brass. There's no anointing. But when the praise team is singing, under the power and the anointing of God, don't tell me how you feel, but I know how the praise team can shift the whole atmosphere of the service, all because of the anointing. Let me wrap this thing up. Uh, and so after you sit all these individuals and then so say, I'm going to go myself. You know, like, I, I'm, going, I'm going myself. But here's the thing that Saul and then I, I got to a certain point. He asked, uh, when he got to the well, he said, Where is David and Samuel? I wonder if anybody caught that. He said, Where is David and Samuel? And, and when they told him where he was at, and they are in the And the scripture said, Saul began to go in that direction towards them. But did anybody pick up? Saul, we only began to prophesy. And the Spirit of God came upon him in the prophesy. But Saul was nowhere around Samuel, the prophet, and David. He was on his way. Mm -hmm. And while he was on his way, uh -huh. the scripture says that the Spirit of God came on him and he began to prophesy. And he prophesied all the way up until he got there. <laughs> Somebody know that the Spirit of God can meet you uh -huh. wherever you are. Yeah. The Spirit of God, wherever you at, God's contagious anointed Spirit can reach out and grab you wherever you are. When you're on the drive, in the car, when you're at work, wherever you are, somebody needs to know that the Spirit of God is just waiting to grab hold of you. Saul knew what had happened, but he didn't think it was going to happen to him. And why he was ignorant. Next time you're on your way to church, you just got done fighting with your wife because she, she late, way too late. Now we got to speed it. The grits was going to be in. She was asked on Sunday morning, and the grits was going to be in. Uh, you get a chance to eat right when you think that. My suit is too tight. My girl is too tight. Amen. Hey, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure.
I'm going to add a song to my life. Oh, Lord, maybe I can get that to work here and every day. And, 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 and so I'm not going to get out of that. I said, Lord, what are you trying to do? She, she was so tired of the first song. She said, I'm tired. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And so
When you go on your job Tuesday, because a lot of us is off on Monday tomorrow, when you go on your job Tuesday, walk on your job with a different attitude. Okay. And instead of complaining with everybody else about the underpaid or supervised and all that stuff, you walk in differently on Tuesday. Jesus. See when things begin to shift and change yes. around your life. Listen, a contagious anointing. Bishop, if you allow me, this is what I like to do. I'm not going to call an altar call. I'm not calling an altar call. What I, and what God told me, was where the people are standing right now. That if we can all get on one court, even yeah. just for us, there's some people in here, see, these people come up here for healing. People come up here for all kinds of issues and family problems and, and, and uh, abusive situations and marital problems and children problems and job problems and financial problems. And the men and women of God, we, we pray for them and then we touch and agree. But how much so would it be yes. if the people of God became and got a wonderful and suddenly
Put your hands together and give it all praise on you.
Um, you can join the buses in Zoom and the following. Um, we have a link that the all that information is now on our website and the details of the new code and passcodes. Every Wednesday, and it's a day of fasting for our assembly from morning until your evening meal. All are encouraged to participate. And we're excited. Bishop George has another book. I believe this is his third book. Thank you. 